Good morning, fellow Atari freaks. Just having a cup of coffee. No better way to wake up in the morning to drink coffee and talk about Atari. Anyway, do a quick video today. We're going to talk about this Atari Basic on a cartridge. Now, Atari shipped three revisions of Basic Revision A, B, and C. Revision A was the first revision, and it had a lot of bugs and oddities in it. We're going to look at that. Revision B, they cleaned up some of the bugs and took care of some of the problems, but some of the bugs and errors actually continued through B. And then we end up with Revision C, which is what we have in the 130XE and the 800XL series built into those. And uh, actually some of the problems continued through Revision C, although they cleared most of the problems up. I got the idea from this to create this video from the channel 8-Bit Show and Tell. Uh, the gentleman over there, Robin, did an episode where he talked about the errors in C64 Basic. So let's take a look at the errors we can find in Atari Basic. And you may not know this, but Atari Basic was is not a derivative of Microsoft Basic, like most of the other Basics in the 8-bit computer line from different companies such as Apple and Commodore. Um, Atari was trying to get Microsoft Basic, uh, a derivative of Microsoft Basic, into an AK cartridge, and they were having difficulties with that. So they contracted with Shepherds and Microsystems who we talked about in an earlier episode that wrote the assembler editor cartridge. Well, Shepherds and Microsystems won the contract to write Atari Basic, and they started basically from scratch and wrote it from the ground up. And the, one of the reasons why they did that is they wanted to put some commands in there to take advantage of the custom chipset that's in the Atari computer, the GTIA, the Pokey, and the Antic chip. So let's take a look at Atari Basic and some of the oddities and errors we can find in it. Don't go anywhere. Okay, so before we start looking at the bugs, let me show you how you can tell what version of BASIC you have. So this cartridge that I have right here, I'm gonna put into the 130XE, and let's boot the computer up. Now there's a peak statement that you can print out that will tell you what version you have in a numeric value. So if you peak 43234, that's the decimal memory location, you get a numeric value back, and in this case, for this cartridge, we've got 162, and uh, according to the documentation, 162 was revision A. So let's go ahead and pop this cartridge out and let the 130XE come up with its internal basic, and let's see what version number we have in the 130XE. Peak 43234, and we've got 234, so 234, corresponds to revision C. So revision A is 162, revision C is 234, revision B, which I don't have, would be a number 96. So that's a real handy way that you can uh, use to tell what version of BASIC you're running. So let's talk about the first nasty bug that was in the revision A of BASIC. And basically what it does is the parser in BASIC, the line parser, allows you to um, input without any parameters. So for example, normally you might do like an input, you know, a string if you're asking for a character string or input a if you're asking for a numeric value. But if you just type a line with this input like that and you run the program, it locks the computer up. So, I mean, I can't even hit break at this point. I mean, we're pretty much cooked. And the only way to, to get out of this is hit the reset button. So there you go. As a matter of fact, I think if you just type input on a blank line, yeah, you're frozen. No bueno. And just to, to verify that that's in the in the version A, I'm going to go ahead and take out the basic cartridge and go into the 130XC basic. Again, this is revision C. If we do the same program, we run it. Oh, well, there you go. See, the line parser knows right away before we even are allowed to finish hitting enter on the line that it's it's a no-go error input. So that that was a pretty nasty little bug that would lock your program up. Okay. So the next bug they called the infamous Atari basic lockup bug basically affects two versions of a basic, the original version A and the, the revision B. So what happens is um, when the program or when basic tries to move downward in memory, a, a block of memory, with an exact multiple of 256 bytes, um, it has an issue with that. So for example, let's do a quick, simple program where we create two strings. The first one, which is going to be 256 bytes exactly, 
The second one, which is going to be 256 bytes exactly, we're going to create a loop where we fill the first string uh, with 256 bytes. So we're going to say the first string, uh, and comma A is equal to the letter B. Now we didn't talk about this in our in some of our previous um, basic. Uh, learning episodes, but you can combine multiple line statements, or you can create combine multiple commands and statements into one line. So we did a whole loop here on one line. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to say the second string B string equals A string. So we're basically assigning what we filled in A string to B string. And then we're going to print the A string. And then we're going to immediately print the B string. So let's see what happens when we run this. So very strange how we've got our first string, which was filled 256 times with the letter B correctly. And then we tried to assign those 256 characters to the B string, and look what we get, total garbage. Now I've actually run this program at different times where it will actually, it'll do the first 255 characters correctly, but then the last character, 256, will be some garbage. So I think it depends on the time of day and the alignments of the planets of how this uh, how this function outputs or how this bug you know manifests itself. Okay. So just to just to show you that it is in that alignment of 256. If we go over here and we change this to 255. We'll do that, and we'll also make the loop only go 255 characters. And we run that program. Now you can see that it assigned the characters correctly. So we've got all B in the A string and all B in the B string. Nasty, nasty little bug. 256 bytes, block of memory, that size, that exact multiple of 256. So that's pretty strange. Here's another quick weird bug for revision A. Um, basically, negative zero is interpreted incorrectly, and when you print negative zero, it just prints garbage. So I have the revision A basic cartridge in there. So if I just go print negative zero, it prints some random huge garbage there. You know, zero, uh, negative zero, E minus less than eight. Very strange. But if I do that in revision C basic, print negative zero, print zero. So that's kind of strange. Here's another strange problem, and it, it deals with the precedence of the not operator, and you get some very unpredictable results. So for example, if I do print not one, I'm in revision A basic, by the way, we get zero. If I print not zero, I get a one. If I do a print double not, not not one, it locks up. So, very uncool. If we do the same thing with revision C, print not not one, we get an error. So that was another problem on revision A that would cause some really, really weird, undesirable results. So our next nasty little bug deals with the string function, or the character string function, actually both of them. So if you do a print character string of one is equal to the character string of one, you would expect that to be true because we're asking if the character string of one is equal to the character string of one. But ironically, you can change this value to any value, for example, five, and it will always return true. It always returns true, and this is uh, all revisions of basic. The same holds true for the, the, the string function. Uh, which takes a numeric value and gives you the string representation. So, for example, the string representation of 1, is it equal to the string representation of 1? We should get a 1 for yes. But if we change this to a 2, we still get a 1. Now, it only holds true with the same number of characters. So, for example, if we change this to a, a 2 character value, now we get the expected result, which is 0. So as long as the uh, the number of digits is the same, we always get a 1. So you can't really compare using this function and expect to get accurate results if you've got 
single character arguments in there. So that's a nasty one. So the next nasty little bug uh, deals with the power function. Uh, the power function returns incorrectly rounded results. So for example, uh, and I've got revision A in here right now, if, but if we do 2 to the, where is my power? Oh, 2 to the third, we would expect the results to be 8, but it's actually 7.999991. Hmm. Very strange. And also, um, for some inputs, and this goes for revision B and C, uh, you get weird results. For example, 1 raised to the 44th power comes back with 1.0002. That's weird. Hmm. Actually, let's, now let's, let's take a look at the results of these on revision C. So this is revision A. Let's go to revision C, which was the last good working version, or the corrected version. Let's do 2 raised to the third power. So now we get eight, which is correct for that one. But let's go and do now the one to the 44th power. And we get two. <laughs> what? That's weird. All right. Also, the, uh, the ATN function, the arctangent function, um, for example, if you do an ATN for, I think, the value one, you would expect... Um, it's not equal to 45 degrees, which is what it should be. And C log of 1, C log of 1, gives us uh, 0 on revision C. Let's go back to revision A. And we get that weird number, hmm. and not zero. Very strange. Here's another interesting one that I came across while reading about this topic. So, um, and, or, then, and step keywords are not fully treated as keywords and can be inadvertently created as variables, which can cause a lot of havoc. So for example, we could do then equals one, print then. Obviously, then is a keyword. So if we run this, it actually works. <laughs> so then you can do print then here. You can do print one and then, which obviously will give you a one. And then if you try and go print then and one, you get a parse error. <laughs> Very strange. Let's try and do the and. And equals 1. 40 print and. So, very weird stuff there. It's allowing the keywords and, or, then, and step uh, be treated as, used as variables. That could cause a lot of weirdness. There are some other bugs in revision B basic. These aren't as easy to show on the video, but basically, Basic adds 16 bytes to the end of a program every time you load or C load it. After loading and saving the same program several times, you'll find that it has grown substantially. <laughs> to remove the extra bytes, use the list keyword to list the program to disk or tape and then enter uh, to enter it back into memory. To avoid the problem, always use the list enter instead of save load. That's interesting. There's also another one here in Revision B Basic that they talk about C load and C save commands fail to turn off the sound after they're done. Using an end or the statement sound 0000, zero, zero, zero to silence it. <laughs> Interesting. So that was it. Just a real quick video today to show you that Atari Basic um, Revision A specifically is riddled with some bugs and errors. But some of those bugs and errors flow through to Revision B and C. So if you, if you want to Google Atari basic bugs or Atari basic known bugs, you'll get this full list. There's some other uh, bugs on there that I can't really demonstrate quickly that deal with reading and writing files using the note command, the random access open command, um, and some other things. But I just wanted to show you a few of those today. Do the research. You'll find the rest of the bugs. And 
keep programming. We're going to come back with some more basic and some more assembly language videos here shortly. Keep watching, subscribe, like, and thank you very much.